Hey folks, I'm Andrew with Viking Electronics. Welcome to part one of programming your CTG-2A. In part one of the CTG-2A programming video series, Al with our product support team is gonna take you through installing the Viking Electronics programming software, connecting to the CTG-2A over the network, creating a new data file, using a static IP address, and connecting directly to the CTG-2A from your computer. Like the video if you do, please click the subscribe button to subscribe to the Viking Electronics YouTube channel. Let's get into the content. We have a computer that's hooked up to the same network as the CTG 2A, the first thing we're going to do is actually install the program. So we're going to go to our website and then to retrieve the CTG 2A program, we go to the download center and then you can see the uh, CTG 2A program as the CTG 2A with a, with a really long version number. So I'm going to download that one. You can see it drops down the bottom of the screen here as it downloads it. I'm going to have it show it in the folder just so I can see it and there's the uh, setup folder so I'm just gonna have the computer run that setup program okay so now we have the the program is installed you can see there's a shortcut on the desktop for it so I just closed out all the internet connections I'm gonna double click that icon and you can see the user account control message pops up asking if we want to allow the program to make changes to this, to the computer. I'm going to click yes for now. Um, otherwise, uh, you do have the option of clicking no, and then and there's just certain features that are not available in the on the clock screen when you click no to answer the, this question. But I'm going to click yes. All right, so then it brings us to the connect screen. The CTG 2As have DHCP enabled by default. So the uh, uh, the spiking business that we're seeing on the on the bottom is the the unit that we plugged in. It it must have got this IP address from the DHCP server on our network. And you see how it has the name Viking Business. That's normal. The, all the new units off the production line would would have Viking Business as their name. So essentially, if I want to connect to it, I can either just highlight it like that, and then click connect, or I can just double click the listing for the Viking business down at the bottom there and it'll connect me to the unit. You can see how that brought us to the event programming screen. It shows the CTG2 is connected down at the bottom. Uh, unit shows the unit name as Viking business at the bottom right. And then uh, you can see there's a message telling us to either select a file or create a new one. With a new unit, kind of the normal process is to go to file and then new file so that I can create my own uh, database for the information that I'm going to be creating all the events. Uh, so essentially it's when you go to file a new file, it's asking you to assign a, a name for the unit. So you usually would uh, assign it some name that might match the company name that you're installing it for, the name of the school, if it was going in a school, maybe in our case, I'll just call it Hudson School. And then uh, see it has a checkbox for uh, clearing all the programming data. And what that's referring to is the, all the default programming that, that we load into the units here at the factory. The Viking business data has a bunch of events programmed in its memory. So if we leave the clear all programming data box checked, it'll erase all those uh, factory events. So then I'm gonna click apply. And then it's asking me if I am sure that I do want to clear all the CTG 2A's programming. So I'm going to click yes for that. And now you can see that it's prompting me that there may be some WAV files on the audio screen and, and I need to go to the audio screen to erase those. So now it dropped me back to the event programming screen. You can see it did change the name of the unit to the Hudson School instead of the Viking Business. We don't currently have any events in the event schedule, but that's because we haven't programmed any yet. I'm going to go to the audio screen just because the message that we received kind of told us that we should go to the audio screen and then uh, kind of what it's prompting about now is if there's a, a number of WAV files that are loaded in the unit here at the factory for testing. So this alert tone 2 is loaded into the first memory location here here at the factory. I'm just going to answer no when it asks me if I want to use it and I'll continue to answer no for all of those. 
So there's uh, 10 or 11 WAV files that are loaded in the unit here at the factory, and, and we just told it that we don't want to use any of those WAV files. An easy way now to just erase all the memory that's in the unit, essentially we're going to load our own WAV files, the WAV files that we actually want to use for the event. So I'm going to go to Tools and then Erase All, and that gives us the option of just erasing all those memory location, all those WAV files that are loaded in at the factory. Take just a few seconds or so, you can show that it's erasing the memory locations one at a time. So we haven't really uh, done anything other than erase the WAV files, but for now I'm just going to click save and then I'm going to close this audio screen, which brings us back to the event screen. We still, of course, don't have any uh, events programmed. If your application requires that our unit is set to a static IP address, then you would need to get to the network settings page of the CTG 2A so that you can assign it to uh, the static IP address that you want and, and disable our DHCP. There's a couple ways to get to that network network settings page. I can use the CTG 2A program uh, and connect to it like normal across the network, do file and open uh, to get the data file open for this particular CTG 2A. And then under tools, there's a network settings page that I can go to. This checkbox is where I could disable DHCP if I wanted. Now I could fill in the IP address that I wanted the unit to use for a static IP and click apply. And it's going to apply those settings to the unit's memory and reconnect to the unit afterwards if, if possible. I'm going to recheck the DHCP box like that. I'm going to click cancel. I'm going to leave the DHCP enabled because I want to show you another way that you can get to that network settings page rather than uh, using the CTG 2A program. The other method is using just a, a browser because the CTG 2A does produce a web page just for getting to the network settings page. So you, you can't do any event programming through the web page that it produces, but it does allow you to uh, actually connect to the CTG 2A to change anything that's that we just saw in that network settings page. So I noticed that the on that connect screen, when we were connecting to the uh, CTG2A with the CTG2A program, the 192.168.210.129 was the IP address for the CTG2A. See, I put that into the browser using Chrome as the browser. It's showing that I'm connecting to the CTG2A. It's asking me to for a username and a password, which by default, the username is admin and the password is Viking, all lowercase. So I put in the, that username password and then uh, takes me to that network configuration web page that the CTG 2A is producing. So then I can uh, uncheck the DHCP box. Now that, uh, now that we're on this page, I will change the IP address to another fixed IP. And now I'm going to click the save settings. And now I'm going to drop off from this connection. Now we're connecting back to its web page again, but now we're on the static IP address that, that I assigned instead of the DHCP address. Yeah, so now we're came back into the network configuration page. You can see it's got that IP address, of course, and DHCP is still disabled. So two different ways to get to the network configuration. And like you can see here, that's all that's really available on this web page is just the ability to do that network configuration. Everything that we've done so far both the computer and the CTG2 have been connected onto a computer network with each other. Now we have changed that so that just the computer is connected directly to the CTG2A. You can see the uh, CTG2A is showing up with an IP address that is probably the last IP address that it had when we connected to it last. Let's just try connecting to it once. And see how it says that the CTG 2A is not found. Ask if we want to program offline. That's very common when you're doing a direct connection like this. You you would quite often get a message like this because the IP address of the computer is not within the same range as the IP address of the CTG 2A. So they're just having trouble communicating with each other. So I want to go to Control Panel and Network Settings. And then I want to change the properties of this network card on the computer to go to the properties of that network card, Internet Protocol 4. You can see how currently it's set to obtain an IP address automatically. So I'm going to give it a fixed IP address that's one number off from the IP address of the CTG 2A. I'll click OK or I hit Tab and that filled in the subnet mask of 255-255-2550. Then I can close all these network settings pages. We we're able to successfully connect to it. It shows the CTG 2A is connected. It shows the unit name at the bottom. It's asking us to open a file or create a new one. I can open the data file, connect to the unit, make any changes I want, and then uh, save and upload those changes, and then run the unit, of course, if I wanted.
So just like that. And then, uh, of course, normally if I was going to be using this computer for other functions, I would probably go back to the network settings page and change my IP address of the computer back to obtaining an IP address automatically instead of being at a at this fixed IP address. All right, that is it for part one. Way to go. Check out video two in the series for programming audio files or check out video three in the series for programming events. I'm Andrew with Viking Electronics. See you next time.